G'day, how you going? Ian Aplis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my channel. I want to teach you how to paint in acrylic. I've got the size of my canvas, and I'll also get the colours that I'm using going up the screen. Now, if it's your first time here, give me a thumbs up and say hello in the comments below. Always love to hear from the newbies there. And this is my free gift to you. All right, so let's get right into this. Now I've got my canvas on the portrait layout and I'm just gonna grab a hog bristle brush and mix up some alindrin, permanent alindrin and some French ultramarine just to get a dark color there because I just wanna do a loose painting today in acrylic and just map in where things are going so you got an idea what's in my head. So from about here, from the bottom, and we've got some bank out there and it's probably gonna come where are we? About here. There. And then the water's gonna come probably all the way along here. Somewhere there in a straight line like so. This will be the bank in the water. And we're gonna have some trees out here. So I wanna get a tree kind of up here. Nice big tree up there. something there and then maybe something here as well coming off the painting a little bit skinnier maybe just to show it's looking like it's a different size obviously here we go that can go there i'll do the reflections later i don't want to confuse you too much with that and there's going to be um, trees coming from here from this bank so i'll get that just or locked in like so coming down coming down coming out spay it out a bit there we go from the bank because that's our water level here over this side and it's up over there and then we're gonna pretty much get some of this all the way atop along this bank here bits in the trees there coming right off the painting don't stop at the edge of your painting, it'll look a bit weird. Uh, where else are we going? Probably got something coming off here. Branches and stuff coming off it, so it's probably gonna have some stuff up there as well. Just floating down into the painting there. All right, simple. Now we'll get this bit here done, straight across here. So what I'll do is I'll just stamp it on like so, come across. And like I said, we'll do the water later. And I wanna just get trees here. Now real dark, so I'll get the darkness pushed on. And then I'll come to the filbert and just get these trees how I want them to look. I want some trees up and down. And I'm trying to keep some sky colors in there as well. Some sky windows, I mean. Now one might ask, oh you haven't even done the sky yet, we're going to block that in. So we're just pretty much doing this. And then also, I'm getting the brush on its side here like so. And I want to just pull down a lot of darkness here into the water. A lot more here. Just before I put the sky colour in, I do want to get some of this pulled down as well. The brush on his edge, just so I can pull it down. Something like that. Now I want to grab some white and just put a little bit of French ultramarine blue with that. A little bit more white, just enough to haze it up a bit. Now I want to get this pretty much about this height coming along here. So this is going to come through me trees here. Just using the corner of this flat brush to push it on. Get all those sky windows within the tree there because they're going to look good once we finally get our um, highlights in there. Some in there, just like I said, it's a loose painting, so it's not going to be precision, but 
To a degree it will be. I'll also get some of that in the water here. So I'm just coming to there. Now I've given the, the canvas a little bit of a dry just so it's not going to mix too much because this is acrylic so you can dry it. I'll just pull that through there. Now if I feel I've lost too much of my dark colour I can pull it back down into the water which I might do later on. So you'll see what I do with that later. Now I'm grabbing that colour and adding more French Ultramarine. And I want to get this pushed to that colour there. I'm going to make the top of this a bit all over the place so as it's going to have charisma to it. Grab yourself a drier brush. I'm just going to use this one just so as you can merge those two together in an impressionistic way, I suppose. I'll have a look in my monitor. That's looking all right. Okay, transition. So everything's still wet. All the way to there. Getting this sky in there. Picking up my other brush. And wipe the build up off it just so as you can scrumble and merge these two together. Now you can put clouds in your sky if you want. I don't think I will in this one today. I'll just see how I feel, but probably not. And the same down here. I want to just quickly put that there. Use this brush to merge the two together in an up and down motion because it's water, I suppose. If too much of that light colour's gone, I can always pick it up and scrumble it back in there. I'm getting happy with that. I'm just getting over this side. Done with the second layer of the sky colour. In through some of there, just to about that height there. Just a whisker down here. A whisker of that. Grab this little brush and scrumble it together into there. Now with that colour, I'm going to grab the phalo blue now and just get that mixed in there. A bit more white, a bit more white. And this has just put warmth in our sky, a bit of afternoon warmth. Come along here and I want to come to that mixture there come along now if you want to paint a sky that you don't want to do it this way that's fine just paint it your way but I want to do different things and show you different things that you're able to do. Grab your little scrumbling brush again and merge those two together. Now I washed it, but if I left too much water in it, it would grind this paint down to the canvas and it'll look a bit shotty. You don't want it to look like that, so just make sure it's well dry. Grab a bit of that other color if you feel it's too dry, this one, and you can wet merge them together like that. Just so as we had a nice transition of the two colours once again. I want some of this in there. Right here, look. Get it to the French and let it merge. I need a bit more water in that. There we go. Grab your scrambling brush and scramble the two together while it's still damp and wet. And grab the French colour if you need to just to vibe it back.
Now I've got some raw sienna and grey here. I want to get a kind of a dirty sandy colour going. Just with this bit here, so this is pretty much all this bit here, just Now what I will do is I'll get my brush this way now and I'll just put slight, because my water's here. Where is my water about there, yeah. See this hard line? I want that broken up with pull downs. Just so as we can distinguish the reflection of this in the water just somewhere there now i'm going to just grab some black within this color just to get a darker value of it now up there's still wet so i'll get away with rubbing this in i think or maybe i'll have to dry it let's have a look and i want to do these kind of yeah this way up horizontal bits of slither in the sand and rocks and that just like this now i'm going to give it a bit of a dry dark up there dark there and pretty dark all the way scooting out now wherever those that tree's going to be there so we're going to get a lot of this and we'll change the values of this dark a bit as we go as well. I'm going to grab a bit more of the dark and some of the tops here and just get minute bits scooting across where's our water me water's going to be right here where I'm putting this dark band that way this will determine where our water's hitting the, the land just loose loosely vibe it in there grabbing the first mixture we had with a bit more white just so as we can put some highlights in there as well very little on the brush just bits and bobs within there Okay, I want two values of this green oxide. I want some of it with the black in there. Because over here, where our water is, I want this coming across the water, where the water line is, right there. Now I'm going to get that a lot darker. So I've just, down here, I'm just pretty much putting mostly black on that brush. Darken that up a lot more. There we go. Just gingerly pull that down a bit. And up a bit. Now I'm picking up that um, green oxide and I want these trees now. Oh, hang on a minute, that with the, the black vibe in it. Just so as I can get the darker color in here. But it's lighter than what we just put here, and it's going to sit over that, I'll show you, that dark of colour we just put there, you see? So it's just got a little bit of black in that green oxide. Just use an, a sap green if you don't have a green oxide. I'm only, I'm only using what I have here, 
so that's why I'm using these colours. I didn't go out and get special colours for this. See how those bits of blue that I left behind, how they're keeping bits of the sky showing now. And that purpley colour we got underneath is acting like a bit of warm shadow as well. Get some of this gingerly pull down from there. Now I've washed the brush and I'm picking up that green oxide on its own. Dry what was on your canvas and we'll get some of this fluctuating. I'm going to just look in my monitor to see kind of, that's it, just to kind of see how I want, to, want them to lay. Now I'm just looking in my monitor here and there and I can see what's going on now. And I'm just simply going to put some of this in the, the uh, reflections as well. So just very gingerly, just getting the value there. Now I'm getting some of the yellow ochre. Oh no, the raw sienna, sorry, raw sienna and cadmium yellow light. What are we getting there? A bit more of this and a bit more of that. So raw sienna, cadmium yellow light. And I'm just going for a bit of a rustic warm look just to get that morning sun hitting the tops of some of those trees out there. Now what I want to do is just try and get way up above from there, come above from it and then just slowly get some of it into that green. Little bits there, because the, the thin layer of these trees out there is just getting hit with the sun coming over the horizon or going down over the horizon, whichever way you're looking at this. There, let me have a look there. I don't like that, so I want to bring that right over to there. Now you could probably just leave this out if you don't want to go this far. It depends how far you like to go in your art journey and how much effort and differences you want to put within your paintings. In our water here, the warmth of this in the water. It can come down in a long line like so. Let me have a look at that bit there. And you can see how it's adding a bit more life colours and values within your artwork. We just got a lot of beautiful warmth in our water there. Now I'm just grabbing the slightest bit of uh, burnt umber sliding within that paint that's already on my brush just to darken some of that because I feel that light colour that I just put on is too weak and it needs some depth within it just so as it's not looking a bit odd. It was just looking odd to me, so I want to fix it up to satisfy my thoughts of the way I view this painting. I'm grabbing my French and yellow ochre, and I want to make a bit of a, well, it's not quite working yet, but let me mix it. And I've got some cadmium yellow light here. I don't want too much of that in there, just a bit at a time, just so I can get some kind of green going. I'll put a bit of phalo in it, see if, it, yeah, there we go, we've got a bit more green coming through it. So to make everything different here, I'll start with getting this on over that purpley colour. Now this is a different kind of tree, so I'm using this brush just to scoot it out like so, 
getting it over that purpley colour and I'm scooting it up into the sky like so. And then I'm going to use this colour first, so I've got some leaves over here, and then I will put my trunks in and then I'll sink the trunks back with the highlights. So I've just got where I'm getting leaves in the sky. And some of that, where are we? This is all coming along here. So I'm trying to work from the back forward. Oh, that sky there, I've got beautiful sky windows there. Some of this. And just pull it. Do the same there. I'm going to get a little bit of that mixed with black. Oh, I did say a little bit, but I put a, I didn't put enough. That's there, I want a nice dark colour of that. So this bit here, it's, it's going to sink this bit back. So this bit's coming. I don't want too much blobby edges, I want them nice sharp edges. This is going to sink that back, coming from there, in the water, bits of dark there. I could probably use some of this tinkering up here, just to kill some of those light purpley bits that are too light. And see these bits here? I really want them leafing out like leaves not blobs. There we go, that'll do, that's looking good when we highlight that. It'll look fantastic. Get some more darks here, just to replicate what's up top. So what I'll do is I'll get a dark trunk, I'm going to use the burn umber and a bit of black, so I'll blackulate the burn umber, I've done that in plenty of videos, any veterans out there will know what I do that a lot of. Get a little bit of water in the brush, and I'll just map in the, the trunk with the depth, then I'll put its proper colours on top of this. So I want this one coming down nice and sharp, right about, where do I want it about? Right joining onto that bank. And lo and behold, I still forgot to... I've got to finish this off before I put them in there, so let me finish them off. So that dark paint that we had of that, which is here, get a little bit of cadmium yellow, just a little bit. Just, and I just want to highlight this bit here that we put on. I have just added some more white to it, there we go, just so you'll see it pushing that other stuff back. Uh, where are we? Come on. Getting right over there. Beautiful bit of it over here. And then pull some of it in the reflections as well. before I do some of this stuff. I just want some twigs, branches coming from out of it as well. Just over the water. It just adds a bit more, I don't know, life detail to your painting even though we're going for um, looseness just where's our waterline about there all sorts of stuff here and just so as I can sink all that back this with this tree I want a lot of 
let's see if we can I don't want too much on the brush because I want this bit here coming from the bush very hairy but I want it dark coming from here have a look there get some of it in there tracing up so when we put that tree in it's going to set it back right in the distance there right along the water's edge there where it's hitting the water some of this has got darkness within it okay now back to our burn umber black color i want this tree right coming from there wow a lot thinner this is coming from this part of the bank and this one here will be quite next to it as well now I'm going to turn the camera off and just thicken them up a bit but that's exactly what I've done okay I've finished those trunks I just want to put their highlights on them uh, where's my grey I'll use this colour here now I want this pretty dry off the brush and I just want to kind of See how that's sitting on there, but it's very strong. I want to kind of get the roundness of my trunk there, leaving enough of the dark so it's showing what's there. And I want to come <clears throat> down here, this face here, and I want this wrapping around the tree here. So I've made it thick enough to do that I want to come this side of the trunk can I have a look there bits of this not too much you don't want it to disappear with too much detail just enough to show it here and there I want to get this, I might have to darken that one up. Bit of something there. Now yeah, I'm just looking here, something's not quite right there. I'll just do that. I'm going to get a white and really highlight some of that colour now. Bands of this just within the tree there like that. There we go. Excuse me. How's that looking? Reasonable. Just periodically bits of it. Different light. Try and scratch that down a bit. There we go. And just go backwards and forwards with the lights and darks. So I'm just quickly going to grab the dark colour and we'll just kind of replicate that business down here coming right off the painting there you want it a lot darker at the end i haven't got enough blacks in it but just something replicating that grabbing the highlighted color and obviously suggesting that into it as well I mean it's still wet there we go okay where's my I'll use this raw sienna over here And a bit of this green here and then I want to grab the cadmium yellow medium get all that mixed in get all that mud off the brush and mix it in good and I want to start sinking these branches back over that green
Can I have a look at there? That's fine, that's fine. See here, I want that right in front of there, boom. See how I come off the painting? I have seen, unfortunately, some people, they stop it there and it just makes the painting look like it's been squashed. So like, I'm gonna come off the painting and get that where I want. There, boom. There, something in front of them, which is down here. Things are getting pushed backwards and forwards from each other. Some of it down here. Yeah, then we're not touching that there. It's getting a lot of this in the water as well. Oh, I better put the camera where you can see it. There we go. Now, just to simply join this to the water, I'm grabbing bits of black and I'm just adding some real old, broken bits of timber that have fallen in the water. Where's our water line there? So I want something about here. Coming off there. Get the right shape. This has got a lot of darkness within the sand there as well. Breaking it up. Uh, we've got lots of darks behind here. So when we put the light hitting those logs, that's really going to set them back. So as I can darkulate that, there we go. That'll do. I'm grabbing this colour again, this kind of grey mixed up fortified, petrified wood or whatever that sits in the rivers and stuff here. Get the light hitting some of this light coming right out of there. He's in the water there. Just like that. We've got other bits just suggesting they're being hit. Just like that. Because I've seen so much of this when I go in my kayak, but I don't have it anymore. I've sold the damn thing because I was just sitting there more often than what I was using it, so I just sold it. That one's a bit bright. Now I'm gonna use this color of the sky to get the white. You know how you normally, when you're learning to paint and you're putting lines of white? We want the sky color there, not the white. So I'm getting my French mixed with white. Uh, oh, hang on a minute. I have forgotten to put our trunks in there. So let me just quickly whack them in. So I'm using that gray again that I used over here. Get it wet enough so it's gonna come off the brush. And not too dark either. I mean, not too bright. And I just want the slightest of some trunks in here. The, look how skinny I'm making them. Get a lot of it off me brush and try and feather them down into the water as well. Very light in the water. You want the paint kind of breaking off your brush. Now, I should have done this before I put the highlights in, but you can sink some of these back with the highlights if you feel. Now I've got my flat brush and I just put a bit of black on it just so I can find my horizon line and periodically where are we? In the middle here. 
just kind of indicate where the land is. And using my bullshit stick, it just allows me to keep that line level, not going too wonky. Now what I'm gonna do is get most of that off my brush and try and just, if I can, let me, now it's dry, let me start again. Just gingerly pull some of it up and down from that line there and just gingerly get some depth at the top and reflections in the water there as well. Because I want to grab the sky colour now and just put some surface and wind hitting the top of the water, just a slight wind. It's not a windy day here, so nothing too violent. And you can see the difference how that's sat down those trees and the water. Okay, so now I can get back over here with me stick, me bullshit stick, and I just want, see there's the middle of the painting, so you really need a lot of bright colors attracting you to there. So I wanna get nice and thin, watch this. This is a lot easier than using a knife. And what I'm wanting over here is enough glare, wind, just hitting our water, come across somewhere here. Not, I'm not gonna do a line all the way across there. Don't wanna do that. I'll do a bit where it's hitting that black, say here somewhere. And just get bands of wind coming across your water, sitting some of the reflections down. Look how easy it is. This stick is gonna allow me not to go crooked I don't like the way I've made it look like three sections, so what I'll do is I'll try and get a lot more wind here. Right across. I'll try and join that up a bit so it just doesn't look like it's free. I'll get rid of that stick, just so as you can see what's happening. Sort of tapering around, you get that vibe that the wind's hitting your water. Once you know how to do this, it's easy, you, you can do it. Okay, there's so much more I can keep doing with this, but I'm going to put my signature on here now, and I want to use this opportunity to thank my Patreons who support me every month for the price of a cup of coffee. The link's in the description below. And I want to thank my YouTube channel members who joined my YouTube channel and support me every month. There's a join tab. Hit that if you want to support my content. Much appreciated. Okay, let's pull the tape off this and have a look. A lady, Shirley, said, can we see you pull the tape off? And I did it in a few others, so I'm doing it again, because this is a smaller canvas than I'm used to using, so my frame doesn't fit it. I have a smaller frame, but it blocks out too much of the painting. And we'll take that top bit of tape off as well. And hopefully that'll hold it on there. There we go, beautiful. There we go, that's not too shabby. We've got a loose kind of waterscape, lake, creek scene there, done in acrylic. We're getting some lights happening there and I know you can do it. All right, that was fun and exciting. I enjoyed that. I hope you did too. And if you did, you tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also, check out this other video of mine and feel free to subscribe. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.